you know, I think once people start giving you avant-garde jazz records for Christmas, you're either doing something really right or really wrong as a musician. But uh, honestly, whatever it is, I'll probably just keep doing it. Hello again, my name is Peter Tracy, and today we'll be talking about another uh, recently released project of new music, contemporary classical music, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's actually more of a track review this time around, uh, because I'll be talking about a new piece by Kasim Nakfi and the Stargaze Ensemble titled Inaugural Music. So, Kasim Nakfi, composer, drummer, electronic musician, and Instagram icon. Um, if you haven't already heard of Kasim or his work, uh, he's written a lot of really interesting music over the years, whether that be for film, dance, orchestra, chamber ensemble, you, you name it, really. Um, he also seems like both an artist who makes music that carries a certain sort of cultural prestige and a guy who, who doesn't take himself too seriously, which I think is a very good combination. Even if you're wondering who in the world I'm talking about at this point, uh, you may actually already have heard some of Kasim's work as the drummer for the band Dawn of Midi, uh, who've opened for the likes of Radiohead in the past. Their 2015 album, Dysnomia, is sort of like if a jazz trio decided to play an even more rhythmically complex and hypnotic version of American minimalism, which I just think is the best of both worlds, really. But I was actually introduced to Kasim's music through his 2019 album, Teenagers, which is a slightly lower profile, completely electronic project played on a modular synthesizer that Kasim put together himself over the course of two years. Uh, I'll link to my written review of Teenagers in the description, but for now, suffice it to say that the album is a, is a real voyage through the adolescence, so to speak, of Kasim's machine, sort of cataloging its growth as well as the, the process of Kasim learning to play this new instrument. And throughout that process, Kasim was able to find a wide variety of really interesting sounds, uh, while also retaining a lot of that rhythmic intensity that you find in uh, his work with Dawn of Midi. Uh, he did a really good job here of giving his synthesizer a sort of personal and human character. As a sister album to Teenagers, Kasim released Beta earlier this year, which is sort of an album of b-sides that shows off Kasim's machine at an even earlier stage of its development, a little bit more stripped back. Uh, but in between Teenagers and Beta, Kasim released an album called Preamble, uh, which I loved, and which I think is even more relevant to the piece we'll be focusing on today. Uh, Preamble is a collaboration between Kasim and the Contemporary Music Ensemble of NYU, and it's essentially a collection of impressionistic soundscapes for chamber ensemble, the score to which is a really interesting combination of graphic and traditional notation. While the music on Preamble isn't necessarily schizophrenic, it is a, a constantly shifting web of textures that are really unique. Uh, and there's a focus here on timbre rather than melody, harmony, or musical development. Uh, Kasim also shows a really nice awareness here of how engaging it can be to write periods of silence or near silence into a score, which we'll definitely see at work on inaugural music as well. I say that preamble is relevant to inaugural music because 
a lot of the same musical language and priorities definitely make their way onto inaugural music. It's sort of like the worlds of teenagers and preamble are coming together here, um, and it was really exciting to hear the results. Inaugural music is a piece in one movement uh, that lasts around 10 minutes, um, and Kasim's collaborators here are the Berlin-based experimental music ensemble Stargaze, which consists on this recording of uh, bass flute, oboe, bass clarinet, horn, and strings. A cool combination of instruments with both the bass flute and the bass clarinet in there. On the electronic side of things, uh, I mentioned Kasim's modular synth before, uh, but on this recording, he actually used a Moog Model D to create the electronics, uh, which is an absolutely classic analog synth from the 60s. Uh, the music here may actually feel uh, a bit familiar to those of you who have heard any of the wide, wide variety of music that's been made using analog synths from that era. To me, the, the Moog sounds a little bit warmer, a little less rough around the edges, but also a little bit less unique and personal than uh, uh, Kasim's other synth. Um, it's hard to tell, though, exactly how much the choice of hardware has influenced the style and sound of either inaugural music or teenagers. Um, because it's, it's really Kasim controlling these machines at the end of the day, and, and they're both machines that give the person controlling them a pretty precise control over the exact sound that they want to make. So the piece gets started with these shimmering, pulsating synth pads uh, interspersed with round, low tones that swoop downward and which sort of become a recurring motif. Um, we get a bit more of a sense of pulse uh, with these metronomic beeps that enter in, uh, but here, as is the case throughout the piece, any sense of forward movement or momentum often peters out rather quickly and sort of fades back into the ambient backdrop. Um, there's almost a wave-like feeling to the piece in the sense that new instrumental colors uh, and voices will sort of rise up out of the ambient synth backdrop only to fade back into the texture pretty quickly. Um, in fact, one of the striking things here is how well uh, the acoustic instruments, particularly the wind instruments like the bass clarinet and the bass flute, um, blend in to the electronic texture um, to the point where there's times where, you know, you can't always tell uh, whether the specific voice in a chord that you're listening to is electronic or acoustic. Interestingly, at about the halfway point, we get a few seconds of, of true silence. Um, I actually thought on first listen that the piece was already over at this point. Um, and throughout, there are these little breaths and little quiet sections um, that give the piece a, a, a quiet sense of, of tension where we don't really know exactly what's going to happen next or, or whether anything will happen next at all. Um, but we do continue on here uh, with these sort of pointillistic textures, some trading between individual instruments and the synthesizer. Um, that reminds me a lot uh, of the music of Anton Webern, for instance, um, in that essentially what we have here is a Klangfarben melody or a musical line that has been split among individual instruments or instrument groups um, to give a line sort of a timbral movement forward as well as the usual melodic and harmonic movement. Um, there's also often these gestures where one instrument will play a note for a few seconds only to be answered by another group of instruments or synthesizer tones um, with little breaths in between each of these gestures. Um, I also really like the way that some of these lower, raw, rougher bass tones of the synthesizer are paired with some of the 
bass instruments that we have here, like the bass clarinet and the bass flute, um, that give the low end of these chords um, a lot of weight to them and a sense of distortion that I think is really powerful. Um, and this last section has this sort of feeling of anxiety or apprehension to it, really. We get the, the synthesizer alone uh, a lot more like we did in the beginning, and a lot of these slowly sliding chords, either upwards or downwards, kind of reminiscent of that first sort of swooping synthesizer idea. Um, it sort of feels like uh, we are watching something that we know is probably not going to end well from a not entirely safe distance. And I suppose that's fitting, given what inspired this piece in the first place. You may have been wondering, while I've been standing here talking at you, uh, what exactly does the title refer to? What are we inaugurating? Is this a celebration or a condemnation of that inauguration? Uh, well, Kasim wrote this piece uh, in between Donald Trump's election victory and his inauguration, so late 2016 and early 2017. Uh, in his own words, uh, this was a deeply troubling moment in our country and the anxiety and sadness was palpable. Many people felt the ground opening under their feet. We were afraid of what was to follow, which most definitely surpassed our wildest expectations at the time. During this transitional period between presidents, writing this piece was a way to assuage a lot of life and death type fears and anxieties that were bubbling to the surface. It was like therapy for me, a coping mechanism. When I first listened to this piece, uh, I hadn't really read into any of the mindset that went into making it. Um, but after reading this quote and, and listening back through the piece, um, it makes a lot of sense. Um, now when I listen back through the piece, I almost imagine Kasim sitting at his desk uh, with his Moog in front of him and his wife and kids in the next room, wondering to himself whether this isn't just the calm before the storm, whether things will be all right for him and his family uh, in the coming years. Particularly with Kasim being an artist and a person of color in this country, um, I have no trouble believing him when he says that these were life or death anxieties um, that he was feeling at this time. And on that somewhat heavy note, I think I'll, I'll leave it at that. I, I hope you've enjoyed this review of Kasim Nakvi and Stargaze's uh, inaugural music. Um, and I particularly hope that you'll check out some of Kasim's other music, and even you might consider buying some of it on Bandcamp. Uh, Lord knows all of us artists uh, are struggling these days, and the least you can do is uh, give my man Kasim something for his hard work. Um, anyway. Later. Mm -hmm.